Well, hello there, my dear friends. Welcome back to the Scott Reed Project. And today we're doing one of my favourites. Just look at that brute. Old fashioned pressed ox tongue. Now, I've got two ox tongues here. I mean, have a look at them. Now, the reason they got splits in, obviously, at the slaughterhouse, we have such high, high standards that everything gets checked. All the offal and obviously the tongues as well, hence why they're split. But that's no problem because when we have finished cooking this off, we're going to split them down the middle anyway. But the first thing we need to do then for classic pressed ox tongue is brine these bad boys. Now, I've already done a brine video in my brawn video. I will put the link in the description so you can go and check it out. But in the meantime, here's a quick reminder of how it's made up. Basically, a brine, obviously your water, and we need to put in our ingredients and just let them melt into the water. So in first with the salt, just stirring till it starts to dissolve. So into there then, I'm gonna put my three ounces of demerara sugar. Again, thousands of recipes for brines. You can use whatever sugar you want, demerara, muscovado, even granulated if you have to. And then into that, I'm going to add my juniper berries. I said about 10 grams, but as you can see there, I'd say that was two tablespoons, just lightly bruised. That's coming together nicely. And then the saltpeter, what I do with mine is I just fill it up with a bit of water just swill it around and let it begin to melt and dissolve. As you can see, we've got it all from there, nice and clean. And then a good pinch of ground coriander. And if you've got some pimento on, you could put that in, but that is pretty much your basic brine. Right, I can feel that all those sugars and salts have dissolved. It's just a case of lighten the afterburners and let it boil away. So once our brine is made up then, like in the brawn video, we let it cool completely. And then we get our tongues in and we leave them in this brine with a plate on top for five days. And then, after five days, the fun part starts. Two tongues bobbing in a box. So, couldn't be easier then, plate on top, make sure they're all submerged, lid on. And chill. Well, my friends, the waiting game is over yet again. Five days for these beautiful ox tongues. They have been floating in this beautiful brine. So, as like before with any meat that's been in a brine, we need to take these out, give them a wash pat them dry and then start the cooking process. Just have a look at them. Oh, I can't wait for this. I absolutely adore ox tongue. As with the brawn video, if you watched it, we will filter the brine, check its salinity, balance it up, and we will use that for another recipe. So let's get that gold over there. So a quick swirl with these in a suitable sized pot. And again, we will start the cooking process, adding the mirepoix as per usual and get these gently ticking over. 
in with the usual suspects. This is culinary lingus, baby. It's the slip of the tongue. So get that in. Get in a bay leaf, a few peppercorns, and over to the old piano and get this ticking away. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, don't you just love it? So as you can see in there, I've put a pig's trotter. That's just to help make the natural gelatin to set it. But obviously we need to turn that down now, just so it's ticking over. And the tongues will take about two hours to cook. We'll cook it for about an hour and a half and then we'll check with the point of the knife just in the tip of the tongue. If it goes through easily, it's done. If not, we'll just give it a little longer. But yeah, the waiting game again. Time to tackle these tongues. So these have been cooking for, what? Three. Right, let's get these out without steaming up the lens. So these have been in for three and a half hours. Let's get that out of the way. So with this liquor then, I'm gonna remove the pig's trotter and remove the veg. I'm gonna reduce that down. That is gonna be our glue. We'll see how sticky it is. We may add a bit of gelatin, but first of all, we need to deal with those tongues. Right, we need to peel these tongues. It does pretty much just pull off, just like that. But you do need a bowl of cold water by the side of you, because these do peel easier when they're warm, so. So we just want to cut these down the middle, like I said, where that cut was checked at the slaughterhouse, just in half. Now it's time to get them into the press. I absolutely adore working with my vintage kit. This is an original butcher's tongue press, just going to put a bit of that liquor in the bottom. Now, the traditional way is face down. One, I'm hoping that this fits. Two, and you can curl it round, just like that. And then another, got a bit of skin left on there. Ooh, you slippery get. No, it's meat. And then we'll put that one in there like that. And then that one in there like that. Just give it a fettle. Top it up with our stock. 
give it a shake. Make sure it's covered. I'll be gutted if this doesn't fit. So change of plan over to the square one. Keeping it old school, get all that back in there. Get this beautiful, beautiful press in here. And just give it some stick till it takes. Go down another one and another one. I'll tell you what, it's a good job I got all this kit. So what we're gonna do is gonna let that cool slightly there's still a bit more each side to go down, but we want all that gelatin infused liquor to work through and then we'll push it down to its max and then chill it overnight. But yeah, saved. So you can just see that that's just starting to get sticky there. Can you see that on my hands? So what we're gonna do is give it that final push down then that will go on chill for 24 hours and then we'll unwrap it. Awesome. From gore to gorgeous. Watch this space. Now, I just wanna loosen off that gelatin off the top because it kind of acts as a glue. So we get rid of that first. Get in there. <laughs> Let's just put it there. One released, two released. We might have to just warm this press up just to get it moving, because that is done. A cracking job, so I'll just gently put that under warm water just till it starts to just gently release the gelatin and I'll be back. So I realized I haven't caught that bit on camera. I was too excited about what was in that press to press the record button. So basically it's come out. I've just squared the ends up, but have a look at it. Hey, have a look at that. Let's just take a thin slice. Bearing in mind, normally we would cut across that face. Oh, look at that. Just look at that. Again, it wants mustard. Mmm. Absolutely perfect. Mmm. Have a look at that. I couldn't have asked for a better result. Fantastic. Okay, let's do this properly. See if I can get some nice thinnish slices. If I can't, I should be worried after years of cutting meat. That goes there. Bring on the support act. Some beautiful, proper baker's bread. Bacon's bread. Baker's bread. Get the tongue on. Get your tongue on. course a little bit of the yellow stuff not too much don't want to take away from the sandwich give it one of them I'm gonna get it on there I don't care give it one of them and give it one of them Mm. I'll tell you what, 
That is just absolutely beautiful. Now, a lot of people say, what does ox tongue taste like? Well, if you like corned beef, you'd like this. This blows corned beef out the water. This was once a very cheap cooked meat to buy. It's now more expensive than some of the finest hams going. It's really not cheap anymore. And it is absolutely gorgeous. And I've just made like a shed load for next to nothing. Oh, come here, you beauty. I don't know what I'm doing, I'm just playing. Wow, well, my dear friends, there you have it. A traditional pressed ox tongue. And like I said at the start, you know, I worked with a guy, he was the king of this, but uh, this is really, really good. And I'd say, without blowing my own trumpet, it tastes as good as is. It's just absolutely perfect. And I love it, you know, it's just a great, great thing to do to take those, what are basically, you know, grotesque cow's tongue and make it into this absolutely beautiful product. And you must go and try some ox tongue, even if you get it from your local supermarket, your store. Trust me, once you've tried it, you'll totally get what I'm on about. So, if you've enjoyed what you've seen here today on the SRP, please click subscribe when my face comes up down here. Also find me on my social media, Facebook, two pages, Scott Reed, the Scott Reed Project. On my Twitter, at the Scott Reed Project. And my Instagram, at the Scott Reed Project. And please do check out my Patreon page if you want to share some love and help the channel along. So, until next time, I'm going to have this little sandwich with a little bit of this, I think they call it Coleman's. Because this really is something special, traditional, old school, artisan, and just good old fashioned, gorgeous. Take care.